What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel. There has been some major news coming from the PBA Tour within the last few days and that is what we're going to talk about in today's video. So you may have seen across all of social media and the PBA website that there has been more studies done regarding urethane and a new rule has been put in place for the PBA season starting in 2024. So what are we going to expect from this ruling? Well, I don't know exactly. And that is what we're going to talk about today. Uh, anything from the bowling balls to how the lanes will play what the manufacturers will expect, what the bowlers will expect, anything and everything we can think of we will talk about in today's video. But before we get into that, let's talk about the ruling and the report that is now posted on the website. So here is the 2023 PBA hardness report that was posted on the PBA website and on social media as well. So again, we have Neil Stremmel. He is the director of rules and equipment for the PBA. Um, and as you can see, here's kind of the overview. You know, it says, based on these findings, the PBA has decided to raise the minimum manufacturing harness of traditional urethane and urethane-like equipment from 73 to 78 for all tour levels. Now, I did see Neil plenty of times at, uh, you know, several tournaments throughout the season. He had, uh, he was testing the urethanes, like it says, uh, probably to see, um, you know, how many shots or how long it takes for the, the urethane to get softer because it clearly gets softer as time goes on. They were just trying to figure out how and why, and uh, that was probably the reason they were doing that to, uh, you know, justify whether they need to change it and come up with this new rule that they're putting in place for 2024. So, again, you know, that's that's kind of the overview. That is the new rule that is being set for 2024 across all levels of the PBA Tour, not just the national level. Here is a big takeaway from the report that was posted on the website, talking about why softness of the bowling balls matters. Uh, this is from, you know, research they did plenty of years ago. And in the middle it says they saw at a harness above 72, the footprint or the part of the ball that touches the lane, is what they call it, uh, had minimal change. But once the harness dropped between 70 to 72, the footprint began to increase. And then when it dropped below 70, the increase was even larger. So, you know, as the ball got softer, it showed a bigger uh, hook potential, essentially, um, as it went on. The next topic in the report is going over the data that was posted. Um, again, it shows that there have been multiple urethane bowling balls from more than one company that have dropped into the 68s in hardness. So, um, you know, any type of bowling ball that gets softer with use could become an issue with how much it hooks, where it hooks, and how it affects the playing environment. It showed uh, if a ball starts at 73, like the number they raised initially, and drops to 68, it has dropped those five points. So, you know, five points is a pretty big number, like they said. And, uh, you know, I'm imagining when they said it drops from 72 to 70, it's a big deal. So if it drops from 73 to the 68, it's probably a pretty big deal. So that is where they're showing the data in this report. At the bottom of the report, it talks about the decision they made. Now they had a list of options that they uh, discussed. You know, there's plenty of different ways they could have gone about doing this, but it shows the decision and that is what we're going to talk about and skip the other parts. Um, so they came up with the number 78, like we said, that is in the ruling. Uh, again, it goes back to the five points of hardness that the bowling balls potentially dropped across all of the manufacturers and everything. So. Uh, their logic is if they come up with the number 78, then, uh, you know, those five points would bring the harness down to 73. And I believe that essentially means, you know, again, it goes back to the footprint that they were talking about. Uh, when it gets to 72 to 70, you know, the footprint becomes even bigger and below 70, it's even bigger than that. So essentially trying to keep these bowling balls above that 72 level from 73 to 78. So. Uh, again, I think that is how they came up with the number 78 for the new rule that is going to be implemented next year. So the first topic of discussion I have is basically just a broad general question for this whole situation. Um, and that is, what does this mean for your thing going forward? And again, going back to the start of this video, I don't exactly know the answer. Um, you know, like I've said, uh, your thing in the last uh, probably less than 10 years has been been making a comeback, maybe making a surge, been very prominent in our sport of bowling, especially in the, you know, the PBA tour. Um, what, is, what does this mean going forward? And like I said, I don't know. Um, if they say that, uh, you know, 78, you know, above 73 has a smaller, the footprint as they call it, um, does it just kind of eliminate urethane as a whole? I don't know. Um, you know, it's, Maybe it's just certain patterns that it goes away on. You know, we did use it on a whole lot of patterns. So maybe this kind of just eliminates it in certain scenarios and uh, it only makes it for, um, 
just certain patterns now. Who knows? Um, that, that is just something I think we'll have to see as we go. But it's just kind of a broad question of what happens to your thing. Does it just kind of go away again like it did for a while? Or does it still hang around? And is it still useful, to be honest? Is it going to be useful in today's environment? I don't know. I think, that is a, I think that's a very good question to ask. For the next topic, we're going to talk about, you know, how does this affect the fans the bowlers, the manufacturers, and the PBA as well. You know, there's been, you know, I've seen pr plenty of people on social media, fans, that uh, don't really care to watch your thing, that is for sure. Um, and some people are the opposite. Some people don't like watching people hook it the whole time. So um, how does this affect the fans? I don't know. Again, that kind of goes back to uh, how relevant will your thing be? I don't uh, I don't know if it's going to be very relevant anymore. So uh, the fans may, may have what they want. They may not. We will see as we go. Uh, it goes for bowlers as well. You know, some bowlers don't like your thing. Some, some are fine with it. So, um, you know, it, it just keeps going back to how useful it is going forward. I think. Uh, I think the biggest takeaway is, you know, the PBA wanted to make sure this is this is right for our game, right for um, the organization, and uh, for manufacturers. You know, I think they take a they take a pretty big blow. You know, they've. Uh, they had to raise the hardness already at one point. It went from 72 to 73, so they made a uh, new urethane based off that. And again, we're changing something. Um, so I, th I think that's it's kind of tough on the manufacturers, that is for sure. Uh, you know, they're going to, uh, I don't exactly know what they're going to do, but the uh, you would think that they make a new urethane just to kind of counteract this, and uh, we will go from there. But uh, we will see as we go, and I think... Uh, you know, that is a question to be answered here for the next season. Now, the third topic I have, uh, something I'm really interested in. You know, I, I'm, I'm very interested in the scoring pace. Uh, we've heard some some rumors about uh, changes in your thing happening this year, and so there's been some talk of scoring pace. And, again, I think the biggest takeaway is that I've been out here for six or seven years now, and this whole time your thing has been relevant. So, um, again, if it's not there as a, as a very useful option anymore, then... Uh, What's the scoring pace going to be like? Does it change? Does it change at all? I mean, it could just stay the same. Um, I've heard some people think that the scores will be lower, and some people think they will be higher, and some people don't really think it'll do anything. So, again, when you're throwing urethane, uh, there's plenty of carry down at the end of the pattern, and the biggest the biggest problem with urethane I think that people have is obviously, um, you know, it has the carry down, and it was, if a lot of people use urethane on one pair but they don't on the next, that's going to make switching from pair to pair for us very, very difficult. That's what makes bowling out there really tough. You know, not everybody does the same thing. So um, that is a very tough aspect to what we do. And, uh, you know, that could eliminate that problem. You just never know. But at the same time, if there's no carry down, uh, you know, these bowling balls are pretty strong. Maybe there needs to be more oil out there. I don't know the answer, to be honest. But that is something that I was uh, kind of looking forward to see uh, within the next season. The next topic kind of goes off of the last one talking about scoring pace and that is you know what happens with uh with certain bowlers you know is everybody just going to adapt and be be fine with this uh, is it going to take certain guys longer to adjust and figure out what's going on uh, again i mean there's some guys who have been out here when when your thing's been really really big and uh maybe they weren't around when it wasn't you know the the tour is completely different than bowling just at home these guys have the highest rev rates um they play farther farther in than everybody else so it's different than just bowling tournaments anywhere else so you can't really replicate it in practice that's what makes bowling out there even more tough uh, it's, it's basically impossible to replicate so um, you know will some guys adjust well will some guys not um, will it just be the same it may just stay the same I have no clue I think that's something to really look out for though uh, maybe some guys will better on certain patterns now maybe some will worse you just never know I think that is something to look forward to going into next season as well. The fifth topic talks about the bowling balls and different options we may have. Um, again, if your thing isn't there anymore, if it's not really the go-to, uh, what is the next play? Um, you know, I've, there's a lot of people that don't like your thing. There's a lot of people that do. So there's been some talk of, you know, a lot of people, if they don't like your thing, they try to use a reactive piece with, uh, say, a shorter pin, less flare, um, and then maybe some surface, you know, get the ball to hook earlier, closer to a urethane, and uh, kind of have a smooth back end motion. I personally don't care for 
um, the reactive with short pin as much. You know, I've had a few that actually have been very good, but to me, the difference, I think, obviously between covers is still just too big for me. I, I think that's, I think that's the biggest difference in those. I mean, urethane and reactive covers are just so much different in uh, how they've reacted in the last few years. It's, it's just not the same for me. So again, I think we could see some funky layouts. We could see people trying some weird things. You just never know. I think even uh, Jacob Butter posted a, a picture of his Radical Spy, which is basically, you know, a plastic ball with a core in it. You just, you just never know what people might bring out to try at this point. So, uh, again, that's also part of the rule that uh, uh, reactive balls, I think it's before, it's maybe August of 2022 20, or 23, something like that, uh, can't be thrown. So, you can't even go back into a stash of old pieces as well and bring out something different. So... Uh, it's really going to be interesting to see if uh, people try anything different from here on out. And again, the, I think the biggest takeaway is you guys have to understand that this is not uh, it's not a rule for everyone. This is this is a PBA rule. So if you are just a USBC bowler, you bowl league stuff like that, this doesn't affect you for now. I, 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 the USBC hasn't changed anything. So this is a, a very 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 small percentage of people that this actually uh, affects and uh, there's not too much to worry about for most people. So uh, just kind of from a spectator fan standpoint, I think that is something to, to look at here uh, for the future. That is all we have for today's video. Again, I wanna thank you guys for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed uh, discussing this new rule regarding urethane on the PBA Tour and seeing the report that has been posted as well. Uh, again, we, we talked about different uh, kind of perspectives from anywhere from the PBA to the bowlers. Uh, manufacturers and the fans as well you know the fans uh, may see something different from now on the the bowlers may have to bowl differently from now on manufacturers have to possibly make new bowling balls again you just never know so again all we can do is speculate until the time comes you know we've got several months before this new ruling goes into place so you know urethane has been pretty prominent for the last few years it's been uh it's won a lot of tournaments it's been uh it's been been in play for a lot of a lot of tournaments for uh for a while now so it could be interesting if it's kind of completely gone from at least a tour for now. So, again, I appreciate you all tuning in. If you haven't already, please go like, comment, or subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys next time.